there are a number of things that can cause neonatal jaundice. And the first thing that needs to be established is the time of onset of the jaundice. So whether it's less than 24 hours after birth, between 24 hours and two weeks, or after two weeks. So physiological jaundice is very common, and the reason is that there is some increased um, breakdown of red cells following birth, and also the, uh, the neonatal liver is immature. It's not able to metabolize that bilirubin that's being generated from red blood cell breakdown quite as quickly as you would like, and hence um, neonates very often get a little bit jaundiced, but it does just get better with time. There are a few things that can precipitate it, so breastfeeding for some reason is associated with an increased risk of physiological jaundice, um, and especially if the child had some uh, trauma during the delivery, for example if a, a vontus or forceps were used, then they are more likely to have some physiological jaundice. If we focus on the very early development of jaundice within 24 hours of birth, a lot of the time it's due to excessive hemolysis. So there is going to be some level of red cell breakdown in all children following birth. But if there is, for example, some sort of uh, blood group ab incompatibility uh, between the mother and the baby, then it can cause um, quite extensive hemolysis, which leads to jaundice within the first 24 hours of life. Um, also, if they have some other reason to develop hemolysis, so enzyme deficiencies such as G6PD deficiency and pyruvate kinase deficiency, uh, will likely cause jaundice to appear within the first 24 hours of life. Congenital infections can also lead to uh, neonatal jaundice, so toxoplasmosis, rubella, CMV, HSV, and a few other ones like syphilis are important to consider. So on that basis, the investigations that should be requested are related to blood grouping and infections. So checking the parents' and the neonate's blood group doing a DAP test to see whether there is any antibody binding uh, to the neonate's red cells, uh, obviously doing a FBC and a blood film, G6PD levels and microbiological cultures will all be appropriate. If the jaundice has persisted for more than two weeks or it has come about after two weeks, then the main conditions to consider are biliary atresia, which is an abnormal development of the biliary tree, uh, congenital hypothyroidism and neonatal hepatitis. And again, on that basis, the main things you want to check are the uh, thyroid function tests, the liver function tests, and the split bilirubin as well. So it should always be considered that the physiological jaundice that's being observed may potentially be pathological, uh, just presenting in a slightly different way. In terms of measuring bilirubin, there's two main approaches. So transcutaneous bilirubin is a non-invasive measure. It's obviously a bit more pleasant for the neonate, and it tends to be used sort of as a screening test because it's less precise, but it can give a bit of a gauge as to whether the bilirubin is, is particularly high or not. So transcutaneous bilirubin tends to be used in children who have relatively low risk of having a pathological cause of jaundice. So these include children who develop jaundice more than 24 hours after birth or if they were born more than 30 weeks of gestation. Serum bilirubin, on the other hand, should be used in uh, neonates who are at uh, significantly increased risk of developing pathological causes of jaundice. So, for example, if the jaundice develops within 24 hours of birth or if they were born premature at less than 35 weeks of gestation. So let's say we have a neonate who has... Uh, neonatal jaundice and it's suspected to be a pathological cause. So we measure their serum bilirubin concentration and we plot it on this graph of serum bilirubin against days since birth. And there's two main lines and sort of three different treatment groups within this table. So if it's under the bottom line then no treatment is required. If it's between these two lines then phototherapy is recommended. And this is a form of light therapy where um, the neonates are placed in this uh, device where um, a certain form of intensified light is, is shone on them. Their eyes are protected and their temperature is monitored. And how the light works is that it converts unconjugated bilirubin into a water-soluble pigment, which they can then excrete. If that alone is ineffective, then the light can actually be intensified to try and get a slightly better outcome and to get a more rapid decrease in serum bilirubin. And there are certain adjuncts as well, like IVIG, that can be used that tends to be primarily in hemolytic, antibody-driven causes of neonatal jaundice.
If the level of serum bilirubin is higher than the upper threshold, then an exchange transfusion is recommended. So this is when the infant's blood is removed and replaced with donor blood. Thank you.